you're walking the plank, Shell Brains. Here's your look at the NECA toys, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, Pirate Bebop, and Pirate Rock Steady. Be prepared to lose a few extra lives against Pirate Bebop and Rocksteady, the first two-pack coming from the NECA's TMNT Turtles in Time line. Equipped with a whip for Bebop and a rapier sword for Rocksteady, this hefty duo is dressed in their pirate outfits, ready to recklessly charge through anyone in their way. Both figures feature special deco that recreates the pixelated look in the video game and comes in a window box packaging with graphics from the original arcade cabinet. Pretty sure we're ready to plunder, but not just yet. Before, of course, we get a closer look at Pirate Bebop and Pirate Rock Steady. First, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the samples that we have a look at in this review. I'm going to take my ruler here and put it right to the very top. Both Re Rock Steady and Bebop seem to be roughly the same size to one another. The figures stand about 7 inches in height, or about 18 centimeters tall. For a suitable comparison as well, we can bring in the original Bebop and the original Rocksteady, so you can see how they have drastically changed it. These figures aren't simply just repaints with pixelated paintwork. They're actually using some brand new molds, especially when we look at Rocksteady. Another comparison we can make as well is bring in Shredhead. Here's what they look like next to the Turtles in Time Shredder, and we can also bring in Turtles in Time Turtle. Here's what it looks like next to Leonardo. Leonardo, poor Leonardo, is going to be pretty small when you compare him against the likes of Rocksteady and Bebop. Rocksteady and Bebop are also quite a bit bigger than Shredhead in the front. On to the figure's accessories. We'll start first with Bebop's. Bebop comes included with a whip. Very observant viewers may notice there's holes, several holes on the bottom of the whip. That's because there's a wire frame. They have to put ventilation holes in there. Being that it does have a wire frame, you can either have the whip extended out. Personally, for me, at least when it comes to displaying it, I like to curl the whip just a little bit so it doesn't look like so much is draping down. And that can fit into Bebop's hands, though not really these hands that are currently in the sockets of his forearms. Luckily, though, he comes included with a bunch of gripping hands. The hands themselves also, you'll see in a second, are identical to the ones that come included with Bebop. I know you're probably going to say, well, wait a minute, the color's a little bit different. Yeah, the color is different, but the molds are exactly the same. You can pry the fingers away, just enough to get the whip of the handle, the handle of the whip, attached inside of his hand, like that. And then, of course, you can attach that to his forearm. Go ahead and just remove the hand from the forearm. Now, for me, when it comes to displaying these figures on the shelf, I would alternate it myself. What I mean by that, I, I wouldn't have the weapons on the exact same side. So if I have, for example, the whip on this side of Bebop, this side of Bebop, then the rapier sword I would actually put on the opposite side of Rocksteady. I'm just kind of crazy like that. So that's what Bebop looks like with his whip. And of course, the other hands he comes included, we come, comes with another gripping hand. That is, if you want to have the whip on that side there. And the figure also comes with a couple of turtle grabbing hands too. And to show, show you what I mean, I'm going to go ahead and pick up Rocksteady's here. I just want to show you that they are identical hands to one another. It's really only just the color that differs one from the other. But they are exactly the same hands. Well, that's probably not the best example. Let's grab hand for hand, like for like. Let's see. Exact same hands. As for Rocksteady's accessories, he comes included with the rapier sword. Now, the sword itself, unlike Bebop's whip, actually does have some additional pixelization that they've added to the guard of the hilt. You can see right there. But it works the same way of attaching into Rocksteady's hands, because he does come included with a bunch of gripping hands too. And you really don't even have to pry them too far away from the palm either for him in order to hold the sword. And again, you can just put that into the sockets of his forearms. And move the hands out of the way for the time being, I guess also it would be helpful too to remove the whip from Bebop's hands. There we go. And let's first get a closer look. I really did want to leave Bebop for last because he was my favorite of the two. But just because he's so close to this side, I guess we sort of started things off in this review with Rock with Bebop. Let's continue the trend with Bebop. Now, Bebop, we're going to do comparisons over the course of this review. I'm going to bring in again the original Bebop so you can see the difference between the two. They're very drastically different. The head sculpts, you've got to imagine, would be the same as well as the slotted glasses that they wear. 
Where they have made the changes though, instead of having the mohawk on the top for original Bebop, they have now replaced it with a bandana. They also call that a do-rag, I believe as well. Something that also changes here on the new Bebop is the fact that they've added the additional shadowing done in a more pixelated look. Now where's the original Bebop? You can open and close the mouth. That's Nothing's going to change there. Remember this one also had very creepy looking eyes. I always remember that underneath those glasses. Well, you'd be happy to know that nothing has changed here with now Pirate Bebop. He also has very sinister looking black pupils underneath that as well. But to show you, not quite identical because the original Bebop had more dark shadowing around that as well. But you can also see that they have very lifeless looking eyes. Honestly, though, that's not really how I'm sure you're going to be displaying Bebop for yourself anyways, but it's just to show you that the glasses work the exact same way. The shells seem identical. Possibly, I would hope that they look identical. It's not just my eyes playing tricks on me. Of course, the paint is very different from one to the other. Instead of having more traditionally the shell colors of a turtle, actually the pirate Bebop actually has more of a, an all yellow or slightly mustard trimmed shell. Again, it also has the additional blocky paintwork that's done to that as well. The arms seem to be the same, although this one, as you can see, has this type of bracelet, where in this case, they've actually given them chains on both sides. One thing that's actually good about these chains is that they're not going to move around on the figure's arms. It looks like they're actually glued to the forearms, whereas these, you remember, were only really attached to by that link right there that was somehow embedded into the flesh of Bebop's forearm. I like the fact that these ones actually don't move around, especially when you're changing out the arms. Um, the vests are slightly different from one another. This is kind of torn and ripped all the way around. We can actually see more cleaner here on the pirate version Bebop. We actually only has just the rips on the bottom. And again, in both the cases, these are softer plastic that they've used. The necklaces also seem to be the same. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to put these down. Too distracting having the pupils staring right at me like that. Uh, the pants seem similar, although they've sculpted differently the bottoms of the pants. The footwear is also very different from one another. So you can see like there's a lot of considerable changes that they've made from one figure to the other and not simply just reusing the mold again. Can move that Bebop out of the way. Again, if you guys wanted to see the original review of the Bebop, feel free to check that out. Let's just fix his glasses, make sure that they're on his face properly. So yeah, I really like this Bebop quite a lot. The pixelated work pixelated look may be jarring for some, but actually I like it. I like the way they've done that with the Turtles in Time stuff. It's not as in your face as perhaps the Turtles figures were. Like the Turtles, you remember, like they had really dark coloring, whereas Bebop here is a more subtle case of only shadowing a slight tint darker on the back end of the forearms. He also has blockier parts on the backs of his vest, but generally like the figure stays pretty clean. You only really see it from the sides of his shirt, and you also see it from the back of his head. Now, the figure's articulation would be the exact same. The head rotates back and forth, up, down, and you can also tilt the head slightly too. Go in there, reaching carefully. You shouldn't put your mouth, your fingers so close to a warthog's, warthog's mouth like this. You can see the mouth does open and close. It's a little tighter, I've noticed, than the original Bebop, but it does open and close. As for the arms, now the arms do come out. The issue with the original Bebop was that the shells... The shell would come loose any single time that you would move the arms out. They would detach from the vest. In this case, it actually seems like while you're looking at this, it is attached still here, but I seem to be able to get more of a wider range when it comes to moving the arms. You move the arms forward and you can move the arms back. The thing I will be careful of though, is this part right at the back here. See this little strap of plastic? You really don't want to move the, far, the arm too far back for the risk that you may be adding too much stress to this part right here and potentially ripping the strap. Don't want to rip the strap. It does have a, a bicep swivel. It does have a forward, a forward bend, double hinge bend in the elbow. And I guess there is also that strap there too. So not too far the extreme forward, not too far the extreme back either. Uh, the hands rotate all the way around. You can hinge those also back and forth. Figure has upper torso ball joint. Nice soft plastic right here, squishing the tummy tum of the warthog. Probably also not a good idea. Has a waist swivel. You can split the legs. They're a little on the tight side here, but I'd rather tight joints than super loose joints. Legs go forward, legs go back. Again, you've got the lighter coloring of the blockier paint added there. And again, it's the only place other than just a few little places here where you really do spot it. Figure has a double bend on the knee, just again, really tight on this figure. 
And for his feet articulation, individually, his foot goes up and down this way. And you can also rock the foot back and forth this way too. I really did honestly want to start things off with Bebop because Bebop was my favorite of the two. I'm not saying that anything was really necessarily wrong. I, I just don't, I like the design of Rocksteady, but I feel like there's so much more character when we looked at Bebop here. And Bebop of the two, like I said, is my favorite. On to then Rocksteady. Go ahead and pick the figure up here. Now Rocksteady has more drastic molding that they've been incorporated into this figure. It wouldn't be the case they could simply just reuse the same figure and without having to go in there and heavily retool it. And you'll see what I mean right now. Bring in the original Rocksteady. It would maybe be safe to say the only thing that's really has kept from one figure to the other is maybe the head sculpt as well as the hands. The lower legs also could be something that carried over, although you'll notice here on the original Rocksteady, this one does have the pockets on the front. The pockets on here are completely gone. They have, of course, remolded and added a brand new jacket piece, as well as given Rocksteady a big hat. I like the fact that they've given the little foot soldier logo there on the top of his hat. Now, for me... Whereas I felt like Rocksteady maybe doesn't deliver as well as maybe just the fact that he does have more lifeless looking eyes. It's not necessarily a fault on NECA's part. They tried to replicate the way that Rocksteady looks in the game. But being the fact that Bebop just naturally has those glasses over top of his face, I don't feel like he loses any little bit. Rocksteady, on the other hand, because the original one had so very animated looking eyes and features on his face, I feel a little gets lost when we look at the Turtles in Time Bebop, or Rocksteady, something just because he doesn't have pupils on his eyes. He sort of has these little slivers of re reflection at the bottom corners of his eyes, which, looking at it from one side, it almost looks like those are actually pupils staring right at you, until you look at it like this. Then it kind of looks like his eyes are wandering off to the sides. The head sculpt, though, is exactly the same, other than, again, the fact that they've incorporated now the pirate hat, the additional hat piece, which is actually is a softer plastic. Uh, one little touch of detail I do like is the fact that they've actually got the ears sticking out the tops of the hat. I think that's a fun touch. Uh, but the mouth does open and close the exact same way as the original one. Nothing changes there. But again, a very much more elaborate retooling that they had to do to the body. I can't even think of what they would do to reuse this body for a future release. It would have to be probably a one-and-we're-done sort of scenario. And I appreciate the fact that they would have gone the extra mile like this to give us pirate versions of Rocksteady and Bebop. Now, his pixelation, all the little blocky additional colors, you see a lot of it here on his jacket. More very much dark on the back of his jacket with only light few. Kind of looks like he's got little wings on the backs of his jacket, but you can see these little blockier, lighter colors added to the back. But otherwise, an all very dark brown exterior here on his jacket. Now, his jacket is a softer plastic but it's very much attached right here. So while the vest probably is gonna be attached to the jacket, they are together as one piece. And even when you're rotating the figure around, you feel very much that he's encased in plastic. The, the joint is actually right here when it comes to moving the figures around, or at least when it comes to moving the rock steady around. And you kind of, again, feel like there's softer plastic working here, but it is gonna limit a little bit when it comes to the figure's articulation. Speaking now of the figure's articulation, the head does rotate. I guess technically all the way around if you wanted to. It's, you can imagine how painful that would have been for him just now. His head goes up and it goes down. And you can also rock it back and forth. The figure, like the original one, does have the open and closed mouth with some nice additional red added to the inside for the tongue, as well as the teeth there too. Now his shoulders, again, are going to be a little on the more limited side. I can only really comfortably tell you right now, I can only get to about a 45 degree angle bend. The tops here, these softer plastic pieces are actually attached to this part of his jacket. So at least you can actually move these back and forth. And I have no worries, unlike I had worries for Bebop, where you could rip those straps. He doesn't have anything that's really attaching to his forearm. So you can go crazy if you wanted to, moving these arms back and forth. He does have a swivel in the bicep, so you can rotate that back and forth. He, the figure also has a double hinge on the elbow, which again, very tight. I would, if... You're picking this figure up, by the way, really any NECA figures, and if you're having any issues with tight joints, before you start pushing matters any further, just run a hairdryer, a few passes over top of that, or you can also submerge these in hot, hotter water just to kind of soften up the joint. Because again, it's just, see, you can see right there, there, there's the double hinge, but it's just a little tight on this figure. Hand rotates all the way around. You also can hinge those back and forth. Again, we already talked about the top torso. Top torso is a little more... Null and void, you really can't do too much with it. You can rotate it fine and good. 
So if that's really all you needed from Rocksteady anyways, he's going to deliver that. But moving up and down is going to be a little bit more limited. Then for the legs, they can go forward and back fine. There are, they are going to be notably a lot harder to split out simply just because he's got so much of his jacket going further past the, the thighs. The thighs are going to be fighting against that. Um, but the figure does have a double hinge on the knee. There's one, there's two, just tight, a little bit tighter. It's looser here, tighter always, it seems, at the top part of the knee. Again, I probably just take a little bit of hot water and submerge that. And then the feet do move back and forth, and there's also the ankle pivot too. A great looking figures. I mean, I'm so happy that, first of all, NECA is continuing the Turtles in Time stuff. Because I honestly thought, once they were done really doing, like, the Leatherhead, once they were done doing shredder and the four turtles i kind of thought they weren't really going to be continuing the trend after that and yet lo and behold we actually now get ourselves pirate versions of this guy getting him to stand and we finally get ourselves pirate versions of this guy uh, from their standpoint it certainly does help because now they're finding a way at least to use some of the mold elements but really when you're looking at the figures other than just the head really being reused and maybe the hands and parts of the legs a lot of what's being happening here, lots of what's going on into Pirate Rocks and Pi Pirate Bebop are brand new original molds. Something, again, I'm not thinking that NECA could probably use for a future release. But really good on them that we actually got continued figures with molds that, again, they probably can't reuse. And while here I was rhyming off all the characters that NECA Toys had released, giving a very short list of characters... I failed to mention the likes of the Foot Soldiers, Slash, and Baxter Stockman as being some of my personal favorites. In fact, Slash, I prefer more than the cartoon Slash because it reminds me of the original Playmates Slash. And now, of course, we can add Pirate Rocksteady and Pirate Bebop to the mix as well. Arr! I made sure I was really good not to include any pirate puns over the course of this review. I'm going to still be good about it, I think. Now, I, I understand certainly that there are collectors out there that like collecting the turtle toys, but have been avoiding the turtles in time stuff, not digging the way that they painted that pixelated look on the figures. I find it's a lot more noticeable on the original Turtle Brothers. When you get to like the likes of Leatherhead slash Baxter Stockman, and now then the two that we've looked at in this review, it's still there, but I don't think it's as in your face as it was with the original four turtles. I don't think necessarily I would say avoid the line and pass on such great looking figures as Rocksteady and Bebop here in their pirate look. In fact, actually, it's a different take on the characters and very much different than how they look in the original cartoon. Of the two figures myself, I prefer Bebop. I just like the way the coloring of Bebop, not to mention as well, he still retained those glasses. Still creepy looking eyes underneath, but that's only if you lift the glasses up. Rocksteady had heavily retooled aspects to the figure. I mean, giving him a brand new jacket, a brand new hat that sits on top of his head. And yet, unfortunately, though, just because he's got those black, vacant looking eyes, I just, I, I like personally Bebop just a little bit more. A big thank you, though, to the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the samples of the Pirate Rocksteady and Pirate Bebop that we had a look at in this review. If you guys are fans of this line, let me know down below. Are these figures that you would be picking up? I guess probably the better question to be posing out there are for those that don't collect the turtles in time. If you haven't been pick picking them up based on the way that they are painted, would you consider still picking up Pirate Rocksteady and Pirate Bebop? I think that probably would be a better question to ask. And hey, now, if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn on the bell notification, and make sure that you're keeping coming back because there are going to be a lot more Turtles reviews coming your way from the folks over at NECA Toys. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.